everybody. This is a great day for you to ask yourself a few questions. What keeps you from moving forward? So I'm going to ask it again. What are you aware of that keeps you from moving forward? So I want to provoke you in this short Move On Monday today. I want you to think about what keeps you from moving forward. Are you believing uh, that you have no power to change anything around you? That you just don't know what it is that goes on inside of you? That you are uncertain? You have the fear of what others will think? Maybe it's the fear of loss. Because if you move forward and obey God, there is the letting go of those things that he's telling you to let go of. And there's the reaching out to the things that he's telling you that you need to take hold of. So there's always a release and turning away from so that you can move forward and go forward with him. So, hey, everybody, share this while it's live, share it in the repost. It's great to be together today here on Move On Mondays. If it's your first time to be live with me, I'm Nancy McCready of Nancy McCready Ministries, nancymccready.com, and of The Producer's Way. So think about that. Are you writing something down? Are you putting something in the comments? What is it that keeps you from moving forward? Do you just wake up on Monday and you're just, you know, you just feel tired and apathetic and nothing seems real? And, you know, maybe there was an emergency, a crisis over the weekend, but you know now, you know, you feel better and so the crisis has passed and so your deep, you know, need for God. <laughs> May not feel as strong right now. Maybe you had a phenomenal weekend and you're thinking everything is just so awesome. Okay, but listen to me carefully. All right, I'm asking you what keeps you from consistently, consistently, steadfastly moving forward? Do you lose heart? Do you relax and then faint in your mind? You know, there are many times that we can make decisions in the heat of the moment. We think it's the heat of the moment, like, oh, I just, you know, it just, it just happened. Uh, I made a snap decision uh, to take the day off, even though I have much that I need to do. I have... <laughs> okay, Karen, that okay, that could keep you from moving forward in certain things. Most definitely, the electricity goes off. I know a little something about that because my house is pretty cold because the heating element on our uh, unit went out too, so it feels a little brisk in here today, Karen, so I'm, I'm with you in more ways than one, okay? So I, I just want to prompt you because so often I'm here telling you, we got to move forward. Here's what you need to do, you know. But I'm asking you, well, well, what would keep you from moving forward? What, what is it? What's, what's the number one thing right now that you're thinking, I'm just not going to be able to do it? I'm just not going to be able to move forward? Or I fear what may lie ahead? Do you see how many things offer themselves uh, to you as a reason to stay where you are or to back up or go sideways but this is Move On Mondays, and we are moving on with Him. I'm going to tell you the best place, the best place for you to get the answers to these things, and really everything, is in you going to your private place with God, the secret place with Him. Because if ever there is going to be any moving on, then we've got to make it our habit we make it our habit, our habitual way of life to get with him. Hey, everybody. All right, now I want you to think about this. Anything that you need to know, any place where you're like, well, I don't really know what keeps me from moving forward. All right, that any, any question, any of that, you understand that that's why we want to, let me just adjust that. That's why we want to go to him habitually. 
Now, my most recent podcast that, that dropped this past Friday while I was in sunny Florida, which was phenomenal, um, I dropped a podcast episode, very short. I think it's only maybe 13, 14 minutes maybe. It's called Habitual Versus Occasional. And it talks about how in the scripture over and over and over again, it says that we would habitually walk in the spirit. You see, many times the reason we don't know things, we don't move forward, we're not consistent, we're not steadfast, is we have not made it our habit to be with him, stay with him. We've made it about some one hour quiet time or something that we're supposed to be having that becomes like the most legalistic um, uh, bondage sometimes because we think, well, you know, I just, I just can't seem to be consistent to get up, okay? I can't seem to be consistent to, to make that happen, all right? The, the goal isn't to have that. The goal is to be with Him, and that can happen 24-7 if you begin to make that your habit. So just, just to give you a little food for thought, I'm just referring you over to some things today. Referring you over to Tent Talk with Nancy McCready. That's my podcast. And Habitual versus Occasional. There are many episodes there that can help you listen and gain some real insight into yourself and then go into that private place with him and say, what about this? I mean, what, what is this, you know? And it's just so pressing on my mind and heart today because this is a major part of what I just ministered at New Harvest Church in Florida yesterday, is there can never really be this powerful symphonic sound that's going to come out of his church, out of his sons, out of us, that we really in our everyday life, the everyday ordinary drudgery of everyday life is that we, we stay moving with him and all things that can only that that big symphonic you know thing that we oftentimes are looking for can only happen if everybody gets in their private practice room and so i just you know was thinking about this over and over and over again yesterday for myself uh, praying over that word that i deposited there at new harvest church in clewiston florida you know, because I'm calling people into that place with him. And let me tell you what, it doesn't always look like some fairy tale, you know, uh, supercharged, you know, time with him. It's time where y'all actually talk, where he tells you things. And I know there have been many seasons in my life where I did not want to hear him because I feared I would not be able to do what he was telling me. I feared being corrected. There was way too much fear about the secret place with God. Rather than going and bringing all my fear, all my questions, all my concern, my, my places where I just wasn't quite sure how, it's not if I'm gonna do it, God, it's how. How do I move forward? How do I live? See, it, it, I could have made the podcast uh, spiritual versus practical because they're not really, it's not one or the other. They are one in the same. Maybe I will do a podcast on that, right? That that's the spiritual and the practical are the same, my friends. Nobody knows how to live like Jesus. He actually lived as a person. He lived through every day, every situation, every phase of growth, everything. There's no one that knows you and where you're at like him. And when you go to him as life, not as a duty, not as a task, not I should, but you go and you sit and you let him produce the time that y'all have together. Because I can't produce all of that. You see, that's that difference between synthetic and organic. Synthetic is man-made. Organic means it's derived from living matter. It comes from him. And when I go to him and I make that my habit, not to try to produce something, not to try to get everything squared away, I make it my habit to go to him. I make it my habit to speak to him daily, moment by moment, that I'm, I'm saying, you know, inwardly, while I'm even talking with other people, there are things happening between he and I. Good morning, everybody. Great to see you. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? That, that is so key. So sometimes you got to have somebody 
that's going to provoke you in that way. But it's not so that you can follow their formula and what they do. I'm just telling you, go to him right now. You could turn me off and you could just say, Father, Father, produce between you and me what you've been longing for. Father, I no longer want to try to make that happen myself. I will come habitually. I will, I will ask. I will talk with you. I will lean into you with the full assurance that you have been waiting for me in the secret place. See, boom, conversation starts happening because it's just you and him. It's real. Jean Dobre. Oh, Magda, so good to see you on here today. Great to see you there in Poland. Hope to be there soon. Hope to be there soon. All right. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? That, that we, we've got to allow the habitual way of life that we're called to. It can't be in fits and starts and just occasionally when there's a little crisis over the weekend. But then once the crisis passes, we're like, oh, everything's fine. You know, no, it's not. <laughs> Probably not. Right. But you can be okay even though there are there's a crisis that could come in and out of your situation right but but i'm saying to you that that th our way of life with him isn't just for when we have trouble we were always meant to lean into him and to be able to move on with him to be able to take whatever you shouted amen to yesterday, whatever I preached yesterday, whatever we do, that is that actually happening and getting worked in the private inner world between you and him. Because A.W. Tozer says every man must choose his world. And I'm asking you, have you chosen your father's world? So what is it that would keep you from moving forward? Well, whatever it is, if you get with him, See, sometimes people say to me, well, yeah, Nancy, that just sounds so easy. No, I, I know that the working out of all of that may not be so easy, but making a step towards him, it's a decision, not a feeling, okay? You don't have to check and like, I'm just not even sure if I want that. Here, here let me just, this is just coming to me spontaneously, so let me just tell you this. My friends, you, the desire to be with God came as a part of the package of your salvation. God did not leave you to conjure up desires. Oh, my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. The desires of the Spirit, my friends, were given to you in your new nature. Do you understand that? He says, I will will it and I will perform it. He says, I have willed in you by giving you a new nature. The desires of the Spirit are your true desires. Now, you're going to have to bring your soul and body into line with what is already true. And he says, and I will it and I perform it. And Holy Spirit says, I'll perform it if you will will it. Oh, this is good. Excuse me. I'm getting saved. Excuse me. Right now. Right now. It's happening right now. Okay. Listen to me. He says, if you will will it according to what I've already put within you, now out of your soul, you will to go according to who you really are, that which you truly desire, I will perform it. Oh, this is so good. This is so true. Whew. And when he speaks that to you and reminds you, because how easy is it for the subtlety of the pressure of I have got to do all this and I just, you know, and then what will happen is, is that you call it legalism and then you apply cheap grace to it. I am about to get saved right here, my friends. I'm about to get saved by what I'm telling you right now. That is what happens. So after the pressure, you know, that self puts on you, then self gives you a way of escape which is, well, that's just legalism and, you know, you don't have to do all that. And then applies all this cheap grace to it. And then guess what? You and the Father don't move as one. Hmm? No, the Spirit, Holy Spirit, put in you the desires of the Spirit, in your spirit, in your new nature. So you have the desire. If you choose... Even when literally everything, it feels like the resistance of everything is coming up. And it does. Oh, 
My friends, that resistance is not you. It's not of you. It doesn't come from you. It comes from self. Okay, you've heard me use the example before. If you have a splinter in your finger, does that make you a tree? No, my friends, there is some residue that is left within us in soul and body that still wants to operate against you as who you are in the spirit. This is why you got to be sifted. This is why you want to embrace the work of the cross. This is why we cannot shy away from it and try to make it sound better than it is. My friend, self has got to die so that you, the living one, the alive and new one, can move on with him. Dying to self isn't dying to you. He made you alive. Alive. Okay? You, new man, are alive. The death is working towards self <laughs> within. Hmm? You see, ultimately, I just told you a big part of what he's going to tell you if you get in the secret place, and he's going to show you in technicolor. Oh, panoramic view. He's going to say, sit back here in the secret place. Just sit back and let me show you something. Oh, we're all up in there trying to do something for God. And he says, why don't you just sit back and I'm going to cut loose some costly grace on you. I'm going to show you what I've done. See, grace is God's ability. I am saved by grace. I am saved by what he did. Then he puts his ability inside of me, but he's got to show me that. So some of us just need to get up in the secret place and let the show begin. We need to get up in there and quit trying to produce prayer and trying to shout the nations unto salvation. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. You need to get up in there and at, at least give him some time to feed you, right? To speak to you things, my friends, I'm telling you, it surely will set you free. Hmm? So that we can live habitually like, oh, that fed, oh, that... That, I'm, I'm sorry, the more I go after my des true desires of the Spirit that He gave me in my salvation, okay, and I start following it, guess what? Boom, it starts breaking open and you start, you can feel the hunger to go with that more. You're like, oh yeah, let's, let's go in that direction, right? Right? So, so this is where we have to recognize is that the hunger begins to break forward. Because listen to me, my friends, you, you might not have a withered hand, but you might have a withered will, okay? Because when you don't exercise your free will towards who you really are in the Spirit and towards Holy Spirit, who is your power, to cause you to be able to live unto Him, your will becomes withered, shriveled up towards the Spirit, but boy, oh boy, is it strengthened towards flesh and self. Why? Because we keep choosing it. Remember, you're free. You're new and you're free. And thank you for all those hearts. I really do see them and I thank you. <laughs> so I want you to think on these things. Now also, before we close out, I want to say to you, many of you may already know this, but some of you may not, that we did launch the Producers Way portal, the Producers Way online school and community this past Friday morning. You can go to theproducersway.com. This is a part of Nancy McCready Ministries. It's my online school, and you can begin to peruse through there and see what's available. When you open it up, It'll have TPW, the producer's way, and two options. You can click and go over and join and participate in the free, the producer's way Facebook group, or you can click and go into the school and you'll see there my first online course is being offered. It's called the Development Project. And this is about going from being stuck in our arrested development where we're shut down, we can't move, we don't know how to go forward, Okay, we long to go forward, but we something just keeps our leg chained to the stake. And we just, we get a little bit out there and then boom, it pulls us back. And uh, so to leave arrested development and begin to move slowly but surely into true abiding development. Abiding development means we're going to start developing your real life, the actual life of Christ. So that 
first online course is available there for purchase and you can see all of that so scroll through check it all out listen to the testimonials uh, and and you know search it out see what you think we would love to get your feedback if some of it was not user-friendly please send us that information so I want you to know that we kept moving on with God and it has happened Today, I'll be hitting send again to one more time, send another uh, part of the process in the book from Trauma to Trust back to the publisher. Uh, I'll probably never be satisfied with the state of the book, but we're going to just have to do it, my friends. We're just going to have to do it. we got to take massive, imperfect action. we just got to keep going because perfectionism will shut you down every single time. And then I've just got to let it be what it is and keep on moving. So what I'm saying to you are the very things I'm sustaining my own life with. It's the very way that I myself am having to engage in right now at this exact moment to keep moving with him. How many times have I been tempted to just throw in the towel and say, oh, forget it. This is too difficult. It's not going to be good. People aren't going to want it. What are they going to think? Blah, blah, blah. Guess what? That really does not factor in that if God said, let's do it, then we're going to do it, okay? Now, that doesn't mean I don't want it to be done well or in excellence, but I have to persevere in that. I have to persevere and keep going. I have to pass through a lot of hurdles. Do you understand? Hurdles come up. Hurdles come up. Oh, never be a... I stay with Him. I talk with Him. That is my habit. That does not mean I'm floating on clouds. Do you understand? That's not what walking in the Spirit is. Walking in the Spirit is Holy Spirit and you, the new man. You are Spirit. Taking a walk together, my friends. It's called your life. And we've got to stay with Him. Listen, we've got to stay, abide. And He will perform within you that which He he is to do, but he can't do that without your part, which is the cooperating, abiding, leaning in, adhering to, trusting in, clinging in. Oh, I'm about to go back in my office and do some clinging. I can tell you right now. I'm doing it right now. Do you see what I'm saying? We want to sustain. We want to pass on that which we sustain our own life with. This is what it says in the chosen fast, Isaiah 58. When you pass on what you sustain your own life with to others. Don't be trying to act all high and mighty and superior like you got everything down. Oh, I just know what to do in every situation. No, I know how to lean and listen and learn in all situations. And that goes on and on and on. I want to make you hungry as much as it could possibly depend on me to create any hunger inside of you by the Spirit. If I talk about Him long enough, it'll begin to stir spirit to spirit within you. No soulish stuff, spirit to spirit. All right? So there you have it. That's enough. Check out Tent Talk Podcast with Nancy McCrady. Every Friday, a fresh episode drops. Go to theproducersway.com because there you can access the free Facebook group and you can join that. Everything on the free Facebook group is free. When you go into the school, there are courses that will be available for purchase. So we've dropped the first module. If you purchase the development project, then you'll get that first module, which is about six or seven short videos. So I'm giving it to you in bite-sized pieces. There are downloadable worksheets with each video. You can take that and process that over a week or so, every seven to 10 days. We will have a new module that will drop that takes us deeper into that uh, project, the development project, because I'm not doing it really in a teaching way. I'm doing it in a conversational way where I'm talking into the camera. I'm sharing things with you. I'm not trying to have a performance in some slick, you know, media presentation. I'm talking with you, sharing those things with you, provoking you to go deeper with him, just as I do when I mentor people in person. And this is a way that we can begin to share this. I'm not saying it takes the place of one-on-one -on -one in person, but I'm saying that this is one of those ways that the work and the message 
can get out because you know that in everything here at Nancy McCready Ministries, I want to produce producers and I want to provoke you to go deeper with him and connect more with me. All right. So check it all out. I look forward to seeing more of you throughout the week and uh, I will talk to you soon. It is time, my friends, to move on with him. Oh, we need to be in real time engagement with him right now with the father. And I want him, I want you to always know my loyalties lie with him. It's his satisfaction that I'm after, not yours. <laughs> but I know that if you get to him, there is no way you cannot be satisfied. It is not possible. Get to him. Don't work for him just yet. Just get to him. Just do it today. Go back and listen to this again. And just simply go to him. Every bit of that resistance I release right now, the power of his cross working and is operative inside of you to come against that resistance of self and flesh. It's the only answer, my friends. You can't willpower your way out of it. You put your will towards his power. That's the willpower. You put your will towards his power. He releases his power within you against those things. And I'm telling you, my friends, I am a living witness. Everything he says that he can do, he can do. And he will do it. But it's as we turn in our freedom to him. So move on with him today. All right? Give me feedback. I want to hear from you. I hope, you know, that you will, you know, if you go on the producersway.com, I think one of the other things you can do is scroll all the way down. I think there's a place where you can put in, you want to get the Producers Way weekly newsletter. It's an email video that I send out every Friday. I want us to connect. Take advantage of everything that you can. And I will not, uh, I will not act like I don't want you to go over and purchase the online courses. I do. I hope you will. Now, eventually, soon, I hope you will do it, that you'll invest in that. All right, that all goes towards Nancy McCready Ministries and sending us out to disciple nations and to build everything that God has put within me to do. That is to build his sons because he is building a certain kind of person right now in this hour of history. It's all true, friends. These are not slogans. This is really true. All right, so I will see you later. Love you all. Bye.